Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt and thank you for stopping by the channel. And if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool fly tying tips and tricks, maybe some new patterns, maybe some old patterns and their history, then subscribe, click the bell so you don't miss a thing. Now I got a pretty cool fly for you today. This one is called an October Caddis. We don't really know a lot about the history of it, but you can be pretty sure it came after Al Troth invented his Elk Hair Caddis in 1957. And we've talked about Al on this channel before. He was a Pennsylvania native, a school teacher before he moved out to Montana, he became a world famous fly fisherman and fly tire. And he did give us the Elk Hair Caddis, probably my favorite dry fly of all time, up there with Parachute Adams. And the October Caddis, it's really just a variant of that. It's got the orangish, rusty brown color to imitate the October caddis that hatch all over the East Coast and certainly down in the Smoky Mountains. That's why this is number 30 in our Great Smoky Mountain series. So back to the fly. Now I know there are a lot of videos out there of this thing being tied. Barry Ord Clark has a great one. Mac has a great one. And if you are a fly tire watching YouTube videos of people tying flies, uh, you, you probably already know about Mac and Mac Flies. He's got an amazing channel. He's up there with Barry as one of the greatest fly tires on YouTube. So if you haven't checked him out, after you watch this video, definitely check him out. But before I forget, if you entered the raffle to win the Peak Rotary Vice, I'll be doing that drawing at the end of this one. So stick around. There it is, the October Caddis. I'm gonna be tying this on a size 12. It is a barbless standard length dry fly hook. And I'm using a rusty brown 70 denier UTC. I'll put a base all the way down to the start of the bend. Now the first component we're gonna put on here is some dubbing. I'm using orange, rusty orange rabbit. I've seen a couple of them tied with adding a little sparkle to it, a little bit of even ice dub or something like that. And you can certainly do that. It gives it a little bit of flair, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm doing a quick, easy tie. This is a fish and fly. This is for catching fish, not for being super pretty. So after the first couple of wraps there, until the, when the dubbing starts to catch, tighten it up again, then just wrap it on up to probably a little bit farther up than two thirds. Okay, I think that's gonna look fine right there. Now we're gonna put a little underwing on this guy. See this Z-line, and it's almost the same color as that rabbit. This, I'm not sure what color this is. I'm not even sure what kind of animal this Z-line comes from. Definitely not a rabbit. So I just take a, a small few slivers of it right there. It's just gonna give a little bit of sparkle to this under, to the wing, to the whole fly. So catch it in right there. We actually I'll need to take the thread back a little bit farther. That's about where we're, we're gonna to wanna to post that the elk hair wing. So I'll put a couple of wraps of this right here. Don't worry about the length of it. We're gonna trim it shortly. Trim the front part off all the way. We don't need anything up here. And this back part, maybe just a little bit past the bend of the hook. That's fine. It will stick out underneath our elk hair. And I'm using standard bleached elk hair. And a bit less than I would be using for, you know, an elk hair caddis or, or many other caddises. So I've got it in my hair stacker. Now one trick I've learned with the hair stacker, don't necessarily bang it like that. I bang it at about a 45 degree angle and then I will spin it around and then bang a few more times and spin it around again and bang a few more times. And that helps you get it lined up. Okay, now after we've got it stacked, the moment of truth, did it stack very well? We'll see. No, oh, pretty good. One of the, the fibers fell out on me. But you can see this is not a huge bunch. This is a fairly small little wing right here. And I'm going to leave my thread hanging where I want to catch it in. I'm just going to lay it on top of that little Z-line about to the bend of the hook. So I'll hold it pretty tight with my material hand. Put a loose wrap and then pull it tight up on this side and then 
still holding it pretty tight with my material hand and a couple of tight wraps there. So we want to avoid it spinning around. That one is eh, starting to spin around a little bit, but it's not too bad. So we can pull it up, throw a couple more tight wraps going back. And I think that's gonna be just fine right there. So I'll lay down a couple more right here before I trim off the front. I'm gonna cut this at a little bit of an angle just because that's easier to get my scissors in there like that. Now, before we put the thorax on and the, the dubbing, just try to smooth this out. It'll make it a little bit easier to wrap if you have a smooth little, little underbody on the thorax right here. So next component, it's gonna be our hackle. Brown dry fly hackle, size to match the hook. Check your size, that one I think, yeah, I think that's gonna be fine right there. So I, that's where I've got it stripped off. I'm gonna put the concave side toward the hook. I'll put a couple of medium wraps, check it. I've got some bare stem showing right there, that's what I want. Now a couple of securing wraps going forward. And I will just bend that stem back so I can snip it off as close as possible. And if you need to do any more smoothing, now's the time to do that. And we're gonna put a little bit of dubbing on this underside. So more wax on the thread and a little bit more orange rabbit. This probably won't take as much as we did for the body because it's just, we're not going that far. And you'll want it to be a little bit thinner because we've already got some underbody there. So I've got about maybe an inch of a noodle right here and it's wound pretty tight on my thread. And I'm gonna get four, maybe five wraps to just finish this thorax right here. Got a little bit of fuzz right there. So let's see if I can catch that back in. Just don't wanna crowd my eye. I think we're fine right there. Now, let's pull this hackle up. I'm gonna take the first wrap right back here at the front of those wings. And I don't need my hackle pliers for this because I've got about five inches of feather. And then I'm gonna slightly palmer it up. So just open wraps going up until I get maybe four wraps. Just be the judge of it. That right there, I don't think that's four wraps, but I think that's about all I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and catch this off with two thread wraps. You got a few pointing forward there, but what I will do on any dry fly type like this, I will push these back and get a little head start on my head before I even trim that excess feather off. So I'm pulling these back and I'm gonna go back maybe four thread wraps and enough room for a whip finish here and then we'll worry about the cleanup. Try not to push too many more fibers forward or crowd your eye there. And if you can get in here and snip this, those are my big scissors. Take my smaller scissors, poke it through. And you can see I've got one wayward fiber sticking forward right there. We'll go ahead and take care of this little guy and then take care of this excess stem right here. Now a drop of head cement and the October caddis is done. Now if I'm critiquing this fly, that head doesn't look that great and I could have probably put a few more fibers up there on the wing. It is a sparse wing, but it could, it could handle a few more than I've got right there. So if you tie any and yours have a bigger wing than that, that's perfectly all right, probably even better. All right, everybody, welcome back. Now this is really the most fun thing I get to do with having this channel. It's taking something really cool and giving back to the community. So two weeks ago, we did a review of this, the Peak Rotary Vice, and I opened up the, the competition to take entries, and we got 44 folks who entered. So I've got 44 names. Uh, the last couple we did, 
I just put numbers on poker chips and drew them out of a cup, but that was easy when we only had 18 or 20 entries. This time we got 44 entries, which is pretty cool because the channel is definitely growing. So I put all the names in a spreadsheet, wrote a little script to just randomize the names and pull them out. So let's go over to the computer and pick a winner. Okay, everybody, welcome back, or welcome to my computer, which is about six feet away from my bench. Uh, but what you're looking at on the screen is the front end to the, uh, the script I wrote. It's got 44 names in the database, and all I have to do is push one button, and the name is gonna pop up there where it says TBD. Uh, but that would be boring. I, I don't want to do it that fast. So I want to see if I can find a drum roll. A drum roll sound effect would be pretty cool right here. Five, four, three, two, one. And Jeremy Nolan. Congratulations, Jeremy Nolan. You win the Peak Rotary Vice. So uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'll send you an email a couple hours after this video airs. Uh, if you watch it before that, then just shoot me an email. But yeah, let's let's get your address to me so I can drop this thing off in the mail tomorrow, tomorrow being Saturday. And hopefully you don't live too far from Maryland and this thing will get to you in a couple days. Yeah, and congratulations again to Jeremy. All right, everybody, thanks again for watching. I just want to tell you all how much it means to me to have you supporting the channel. Now, if you didn't win this drawing, hey, that's okay. Stick around because next month it's gonna be even better. I am really excited about this one. I picked up a new copy of Don Kirk's book, The Great Smoky Mountain Flies, and I am going to be giving away all the materials needed to tie every dry fly in that book. I wanted to do it for every fly in the book, but that ended up being about $350 worth of materials. So we're just going to do dry flies, and maybe later we'll do one for the wets and nymphs. But it's still an amazing, amazing gift. So stick around for... Uh, you know, November, early November, we'll announce this one and do that then. So thanks again for all your support, folks. I really do appreciate it. It keeps me motivated to keep making videos and, uh, you know, keep tying. So we'll see you next time.